So let's talk a little bit about uh, the civil structures and the balsa wood bridge. Probably the, the key things to look at when you're looking at a balsa wood bridge, first of all is the overall, the, the overall dimensions of the bridge. We see, unfortunately, we DQ a lot of bridges just based on the standard dimensions that aren't followed. Um, it's a simple thing to check. Um, definitely measure the maximum length, maximum width, uh, maximum height. You got to have the clearance, the 10 centimeters of clearance, and the minimum span of, of 25 centimeters. And the reason we need the clearance and the span is when it fits in the testing apparatus. If it doesn't have that, then it won't. It won't sit very. It won't sit completely on the on the abutments, and so um, if you're sitting off the abutment, then you don't have a fair chance to test this bridge to transfer the load. Um, so unfortunately, we do disqualify a lot of bridges just on these these six basic um, dimensions. So when you when you lay out your bridge, make sure you measure it before you glue it or after you glue it when it's done, you make sure before you bring it in that it meets all those specifications. The setup for the balsa wood. Right. The blocks. Civil structures. For civil structures. There's the metal plate. Okay. And the 10 by 10 centimeter plate goes on top of the actual bridge. And that's the bearing plate that the load's applied. Okay. The other specification that's unique to the balsa wood bridge is it has an angle um, requirement. And all angles have to be greater than 30 degrees. And unfortunately, when we get to a bridge, sometimes we'll get the small angles at the bottom, which, let's test this one, looks like it's only 20 degrees. So this angle here would disqualify this bridge. Now, was it a bad joint? Was it a bad glue? Let's see if it's, you can see just a small little movement and it's, it's fine. So we have to Make sure that you have a good solid glued joint and that's how that bridge would be. So you see you had a failed joint here, caused the bridge to be the angle to go away. So that is a little poor craftsmanship. We need to make sure you get your glue in effectively. But just looking at that, a small difference and you can see that's all it takes to disqualify a bridge. All the work that you put into it. Um, basically aren't able to com to compete. Um, so check your angles, check, you know, make sure your all your joints are good, all your, your glue is strong, um, and your overall dimensions are, are very solid and within the specifications. The reason we were, you want to design to the specifications just like in a project, if you're out on a job and you're given specifications, if you don't check those and you bring that bridge out to the job and it doesn't fit, well, it's going to cost your, your company a lot of money and um, may cost you your job. So you really want to make sure that you, you che double checked all your dimensions. The other thing to think about on what makes a good quality bridge is how do you transmit the load at the top down to the abutments at the bottom, because that's the whole purpose of, the, of these bridges, is we're going we're to load it at the top, it's going to be transmitted down through the different members and into your abutments at the bottom, and then you want to have a light bridge, but an efficient bridge. So when you, when you lay out your design, you want to think about, all right, if I add a load at the top, where's that load going to go? How would it follow down these members? Do these members make sense? Is there a, is there a reason I've laid them out that way? Or is it because I thought it would look pretty cool and didn't think about how the load was going to get there? So each one of these members can play an important role of transmitting 
the heavy load at the top to get it all the way down to the bottom and carry the load into your buttons and provide a safe bridge. This bridge is a it was a very narrow bridge. We've seen bridges similar in this design that have had three and four um, actual similar members all glued together. And sometimes having a lighter bridge is more efficient and sometimes having more members together can be more efficient. can carry much heavier load, but when you divide it by the weight of the bridge, it's still a more efficient bridge. The other thing that we really check with the balsa wood is the joints. The, the gluing of the, the, there are specific rules in the, there's a page actually in the rules that show what type of joints are okay and what type are not. And please pay attention to that. Um, we have had to disqualify uh, a few bridges just because the jo they've used an unacceptable joint. And, and so we always want to make sure that we're, all the joints are legal. Um, we don't have the, these crossing or extension type joints or the narrow um, angled joints. So that's, that's kind of the distinction. This is your first year doing balsa wood bridges. It's a little bit different than the popsicle stick. I guess I would say that we, these bridges can carry in a, a tremendous amount of weight. Um, we've had um, some balsa wood bridges carry several hundred pounds. It's, it's pretty exciting when they go. It's, they will deflect uh, a significant amount, but they're very strong. They're very strong in tension. And so that allows them to bend um, and deflect a significant amount before they actually fail and uh, lose their load carrying, load carrying capacity. Uh, it's pretty exciting to watch. You can have a, when a bridge such as this carries several hundred pounds, people get pretty excited and cheer it on as it goes. It's, it's really fun to watch. Well, I hope you have an um, enjoyable time teaching your students to build successful bridges and have that creativity and, and different designs and, and encourage neat and clean and efficient design and challenge them to think about what is in their design and why is it why is it going to be the best bridge that they can build. I look forward to seeing you in March at the competition.